In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at what we can do with text frames. So I'm going to go to a different page that doesn't have quite as many columns, so we don't have as much visual noise on the page, and we can focus just on the frame, the text frame itself. So I'm going to click on a type, the type tool, and draw out a frame. When I click and drag, it's creating a text frame, and of course, I can fill that text frame with a placeholder text very easily. So I'll just click and choose fill with placeholder text. Now I'm going to go back to the black arrow. Now I can tell that this is a text frame by the fact that of course I see text in it but I also I see this little white box here and another white box there. It is possible for you to link text frames so if I click and drag another text frame somewhere else I can link one to the other. Now you might not see any results at first until I have made this text frame smaller so that all the text that's in that frame is not visible. Then you'll notice that I get this red um, plus here which indicates there's text in this frame that's not being viewed right now. I can click on that and link it to another frame. Now as soon as I click on it you'll notice that the icon by itself will allow me to draw a new text frame or if I hover over an existing one I can link it to that frame. Now one of the nice features about InDesign versus those of you who may remember some of the older applications is that if I delete one of the text frames the text will reflow into any other remaining text frames that are there. Of course if I delete all the text frames then all the text deletes with it so that's kind of a bad thing. Now text frames can take on many different shapes and sizes. You can basically make a text frame out of anything. Now these are the rectangular ellipse polygon frame tools and these are rectangular ellipse polygon tools and they're really essentially the same thing. Same thing with the pen tool. You can create your own custom shapes or the pencil tool you can use to create a shape if you want to use. Um, I guess the pencil tool doesn't really create a closed shape quite the same way. But anyway, anything can basically become a frame. If I create an ellipse frame here, you'll notice that this has an X in it which gives me a good indication that I'm going to be, be placing something inside this particular circle versus it not having that um, X in the inside, which is what you would see if I created just a regular ellipse. Now, there really is no difference between the two, because you can go between them easily. If I right-click on one that's selected, I can go to Content and change it to whatever I want. If I change it to Unassigned, then it's the same thing as this one. If I click on the one below and right-click and choose Content as Graphic, then you'll notice it has the X in the middle. So there really is no difference between the types of frames. They're just frames. Now you can attach text to anything. So if I click on the plus, I can attach it to basically any object that's there. Now notice how the icon changes just a little bit because now there's a curved parentheses around this text which means that the text knows that it's be going to be going into a curved object. So I'll delete it here and you'll notice now I get that curved um, frame. And with that curved frame, <coughs> we have of course the ability to even edit it so we could actually make it a non-traditional curve shape or something like that. Not suggesting that it should be that shape, but um, if we had created something with the pen tool, it'd give us this ability as well. So it really doesn't matter what that text frame is because it can be anything you want and it can be any shape that you want and that's really powerful. Now one of the other things that is important about text frames though are the text frame options. So I'm going to move this text frame into this circle, delete the original and just expand the circle a little bit. And one of the things that I want to do is just give it a little background so I can see what's going on there. So I'll do swatches, give it the yellow since that's kind of, yeah, it's, it's there and I can see the text behind it. Now I'm going to right click and go to text frame options. And it's really important to understand what these options are. Um, now depending upon whether or not you have a non-square versus square object selected or a rectangle object, you will get different options. So do be aware of that. You'll notice the different options especially for the inset spacing. 
but we'll come to that in a second. Now one of the options that you have is to actually change your columns within here. So make sure that you click on the preview button and you'll see that you can actually have multiple columns within a text frame, which is the same thing that we changed up in the top right hand corner in the previous tutorial. We can also change our gutter like we could before and we can also change our width of our object itself it seems or, or uh, let's say if we change the width of our columns it will change the width of our object which is probably not something that we want to do. Um, I'm not really sure what the fixed column width is I don't know I haven't used it but this inset spacing is important because we can inset our text from the outside of our object very easily. Now you'll notice that this just says inset versus um, top, bottom, left, and right. We'll only get those to work if we actually have a rectangle here that we have as our text frame. The next thing we have is our vertical adjustment, our justification, and we don't have that set, but this next toggle is very important. Ignore text wrap. We'll be coming to that later. Anyway, click OK and you'll see that we do have our text in columns inside a non-rectangular um, frame. So that's pretty cool. If I go to my preview mode, I can click off of the object and, and you'll see a little bit more what it would look like if it was going to be printed. Now this would not probably not be the best um, frame to use, of course, because your text is really small within those text frames or those um, boxes. So um, I'm going to make a traditional text frame, just one text frame, and I'm going to link my text to it. So even though I'm in preview mode, it still notices the object is there. So it's something to be aware of. If you're getting good at using InDesign, you can actually work a lot in preview mode and still be very effective without having to see the outlines of all your different objects. Anyway, I'll delete the first frame so that I get all the text to, just to go into the rectangular frame. Now when I go to my text frame options, you'll see that I get the inset spacing for the top that I can adjust, uh, or the bottom, or whichever ones, and I can actually adjust them separately which is kind of an interesting thing to be able to do with um, a text frame itself. Now I can also get the vertical justification here for centering or making it fit on the bottom or justifying the text. And of course that might not really work when I, I have uh, my inset spacing a little bit different, but if I have less text than fills this box, which I'm going to delete some of that text, you'll notice that those text options really make a big difference. If I do align to the top, it'll all go there. Align to the bottom, it'll go there. Align to the center. And if I do justify, then it will spread the letting across the entire document. So that's something to be aware of. This paragraph spacing limit, I'm not really sure of. That's something you might have to look into if you're interested in using it. Now, you may be able to find some of these same options actually over on the right-hand side. Um, right now, it has the ability to, I guess this is balanced versus unbalanced columns, so it's not going to really apply to this text frame. But you just want to be aware of those text frame options. Now, these text frame options are going to be really important for one of the next things that we're going to be doing, which is looking at styles and how they're used. So go ahead on to the next tutorial.